Now the girls have your tent ready, Mr. Morgan. Come with me. You two will be ready shortly. We put you over here. I'm sure everything will be fine, Miss Grimshaw. It should be. Most of your stuff from Blackwater got saved. Everything apart from my money. Oh, don't remind me. Well, we can always make more money. We're gonna have to. Miss Jackson, I've seen shit with more common sense than you. Do it properly. Hello, Johnny from Eurogamer here, and this, as if you needed telling, is Red Dead Redemption 2. It's an absolutely vast video game letting you explore the heartlands of America as you, that is Arthur Morgan, and the rest of the Dutch Vandalin gang try to escape the long arm of the law. Even the most hardened outlaws can't keep robbing trains or getting into shootouts every hour of the day, mind you. At some point, they need to rest, which is where the camp comes in. The camp acts as a hideout for the gang and a focal point for its members, sure, but it also offers you a lot of important, helpful features. Some of these are pretty easy to overlook, so in the interest of keeping you well rested and well equipped, here's a handy guide to how to get the most out of Red Dead Redemption 2's camp. I think we all feel a little happier. Let's start with the very basics. The camp acts as a base of operations for Dutch's gang and you, Arthur Morgan. It's a place for you to eat, to sleep, and to generally take a break from your grand adventures. Obvious as it may sound, eating and sleeping are both important activities if you want to keep your strength up. Both of these things will refill your health core, which helps you recover from injury more swiftly. In addition, managing your diet affects your health and stamina bars. If you're underweight, for example, you'll have more stamina, but your health will suffer. Now, you'll be finding plenty of food in the course of your adventures in Red Dead Redemption 2, but as a handy extra, the camp will furnish you with some provisions alongside ammunition and healing supplies, meaning the camp is a good place to stock up if you're running low. Do bear in mind, however, that these supplies aren't limitless. You can check on the levels of each of these supply types at the tithing box. The logo for each has three colours to represent levels, red, yellow and white, to be specific. We'll get on to how you can make sure the camp is well stocked and that it's stocked with high quality items in just a minute. Sticking with food for the moment though, Pearson, the most culinary minded of Dutch's gang, always has a pot of stew on the go, which is an easy way to fill yourself up, although do bear in mind you can only take a bowl every few days. Like many of the things in camp, Pearson's station can be upgraded. A chicken coop will improve the quality of the stew for example, but you can also upgrade this area to give Pearson access to leatherworking tools, letting you craft upgrades for your equipment. Now, as I mentioned, the camp stocks aren't endless, so if you're going to be picking up food, ammo and medical supplies on the regular, you need to do your bit to make sure the camp has enough supplies to meet demand. This is where Dutch comes in. And remember, whatever it is that you find, the camp gets its slice. Now be sensible out there. See, Dutch is big on shared responsibility and he expects that each member of the gang will do their part and chip in to make sure that everyone prospers. In game terms, what this means is there's a donation box, the tithing box, round the back of his tent where you can donate money and valuables for the good of the gang. It's entirely up to you what you donate. You can sling in some cash from your wallet, for example, setting the amount you want to chip in right down to the exact number of cents before dropping it in the box. Valuables you've looted from your enemies or found in the world, such as pocket watches or belt buckles, are also accepted. Dutch is running a criminal organisation after all, so it's not like he can afford to be picky. To that end, you can also donate provisions, ingredients and healing items. It all helps to keep the gang and the camp running smoothly. Just because you're dropping in a steady supply of spare change though, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be lining your pockets with top quality medication or, um, really nice baked beans. If you want to broaden the scope of things you can receive from the camp, that's tinned goods or rifle ammo for example, you'll need to upgrade each attendant station. 
Going into the ledger allows you to manage camp upgrades, and taking the time to improve the stations for ammo, provisions, and healing supplies will make sure you're offered the most helpful items as you prepare to ride out into the wilds once more. While we're talking about upgrading the camp, actually, this is a very good moment to talk about fast travel, because, for one thing, this is a massive game and you're going to need it, and, for another, you don't get it automatically it has to be unlocked. Specifically, you have to upgrade Arthur's tent in order to get a fast travel map. This upgrade costs $325. Unfortunately, before you're given the chance to upgrade Arthur's tent, you have to upgrade Dutch's first. I guess it simply won't do for the boss of the gang to be slumming it in a bog-standard tent while his subordinates are upgrading theirs to penthouse quality. Upgrading Dutch's tent as a necessary first step, then, will set you back $220, bringing the total in-game cost of unlocking fast travel to $545. Now, that does sound like a lot of money, and to be fair, it is, but try not to worry too much. The economy of Red Dead Redemption 2 really starts to snowball at some point, and you actually end up with quite a lot of cash. If the idea of doing Dutch a good turn has you wincing, though, well, you might want to sit down for this next bit, because it's far from the last favour you'll be doing for Mr. Vanderlind or the rest of his gang. See, a number of the missions in Red Dead Redemption 2 start with Arthur Morgan talking to somebody in camp before helping them attend to business. In addition to this, though, they'll also ask you for certain items. Dutch might confide in you that he misses smoking a pipe every now and then, for example, after his old one got left behind in Blackwater. You can bring him a new one for a reward. One in, one in Blackwater, I know. Well, if I find one, you can have it. Well, you are a gentleman, Mr. Morgan. I raised you well. <laughs> Similarly, Kieran is after some kind of herb in order to keep the horses healthy. So, while pursuing these items might be a bit of a faff, it does at least have its benefits. Just don't call it a fetch quest. If you really want to delight your fellow campers, however, you can get stuck in with your share of the daily chores. Activities like lugging a bale of hay over to the horses and giving them a good feed are simple ways to give the camp a little boost. Most notably in how friendly the other members of Dutch's gang are toward you at any given moment. The game explicitly tells you that honour and character attributes can be improved by doing chores, so if you want some simple and effective ways to top up the honour tracker, you can do just that without even having to leave camp. Turns out there is honour among thieves, after all. But camp isn't just about chasing down items for those gang members too lazy to go get them for themselves, of course. It's also a good place to learn about the other characters by talking to them, hearing their stories, or by looking at the stuff left lying about the place. There are framed photographs, for example, or there are documents for you to stick your nose into, like this one certifying that Marion Williamson was dishonourably discharged from the US Army in 1892 for attempted murder and deviancy. Talking of living dishonourably, or perhaps that should be dishevelledly, you're going to get pretty dirty while exploring the wilds of Red Dead Redemption 2 if your horse falls off a boardwalk and tips you into the mud, for example. Thankfully, the camp is a place where you can smarten up a bit with a jolly good wash. If you go too long without bathing, in fact, Ms Grimshaw will force you to, so consider yourself warned. In addition to giving yourself a decent scrub, you can also have a shave at the camp, letting you pick a style for your face furniture to be fashioned into, as well as setting the hair length. Your beard will grow out dynamically as you play, so this is an activity you'll have to get used to if you want to remain smooth-faced. Even if you aren't interested in trimming the beard back, though, this station in the camp is still useful as it enables you to choose the very sweetly named function Persuade Hair, which can also help keep Mr. Morgan looking neat and tidy. And there you have it, a simple guide to getting the most out of the camp in Red Dead Redemption 2. 
Hopefully you found it helpful, and of course, if you have any tips of your own, we'd love to hear them in the comments below. We've got loads more videos on Red Dead Redemption 2 for you to watch, so do give one of those a click if you fancy. Do like and subscribe for plenty more from Eurogamer, but either way, thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day. Use a slug of whiskey in this. Maybe after lunch, eh? How you doing, Karen?